So one of the recent findings of studies is that the breath work, the Wim Hof method, increases lung capacity. Mm. And that's been shown, lung capacity is actually the closest link to lifespan. So obviously diet's super important, exercise, all of those things. But you would think that diet or exercise or sleep or something else would be the closest link to a long life. But actually lung capacity has been shown to be the thing that, that means if you've got a bigger lung capacity, you've got more of a chance of, of living a longer life. So that is now been proven to be increased by the Wim Hof method. And as a singer, I can really feel that since doing the breath work, I've just got more space in my lungs. I can I can really like belt more when I'm singing. I can I can hold the note longer. So it's really impacting me in that way as well. Hey, welcome back to Soul Awakenings with Madia Sosan podcast. Today we have Lisa T. Lisa is a singer and a Wim Hof instructor based in Manchester. She has performed at Glastonbury Festival and had two number one singles with her music, whilst also graduating with a psychology degree, qualifying as a mindfulness teacher, Wim Hof instructor and working with BBC Radio as their mental health expert. Lisa is now combining her two passions with wellness sessions and live music events that leave people feeling elated after a life-changing experience. Let's bring her on. Hi Lisa, how are you doing? Hello, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm great, thank you very much. Um, I'm just thinking back where we met. We're actually we met first time a couple of weeks ago, but I've seen you around on social media and Jake's been, you know, talking about you quite a lot. But we actually unknowingly crossed path Tony Robbins event. Yeah. <laughs> How crazy. I know. <laughs> I know you were like you were getting interviewed somewhere and um I was just like looking at like, I know this woman, I know this woman. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I just walked past. <laughs> Uh, what an um, amazing event that was yeah it was just yeah life-changing yeah so then I saw you at uh, this event called Lum Illuminate yeah and uh, you were doing um, breath work and you were doing uh, Wim Hof like cold water therapy it was it was great and you, the way you were holding space was just just incredible oh, so for our listeners can you tell us a bit about who you are what do you do a brief o o overview yeah, of who well, Lisa is. Yeah, so as you said, I've got the wellness side to me. So I'm a Wim Hof instructor. Thought I'd wear my T-shirt for the, uh, the the people that be watching the video. So yeah, Wim Hof instructor. So breath work, uh, cold therapy, also a mindfulness teacher. Um, I've worked with BBC Radio for a couple of years doing like little short snippet well-being tips on... Um, my own slot called Monday Motivation with Lisa T. So that's a big part of me, the wellness side. And then the other side of me, my other passion is my singing. So I um, gig every weekend in Manchester um, with my guitarist, Luke, and singing is just my absolute like love. I love singing. So more recently, since the Tony Robbins event, I've been bringing the two passions together. So during my wellness events after the breath work and the meditation I do some singing um, as people are coming around and my guitarist will play guitar and we're just really combining the two together and it's working pretty well so it feels really new and exciting which is great oh that's amazing we'll get into your music and everything um later on in the interview but yeah. I want to ask you how was your childhood what was your environment like let's let's get to know who Lisa T is yeah. on a personal level <laughs> yeah no, that's fine so I'm an only child um which I think I don't know I think you always have moments where you feel like the grass is always greener no matter your situation and you think oh I wish there was definitely so many times growing up that I used to say to my mom I want a sister please I want a sister um, because I always just liked the idea of having siblings. But I'm so close to my mum, and p potentially that might be because I'm an only child, I don't know, but I'm I'm really close to both my parents, but me and my mum have always had a really nice 
sister-like relationship um, mm. because I always craved that. So that was really nice, especially when I got into my teenage years and we, you know, I grew up a bit and I got a bit like more mature and I wanted to spend time with my mom and we go shopping together and stuff. So that was always really nice. Um, but yes, as a child, I had loads of different hobbies every night. I was doing like one night I'd be doing swimming then I'd be doing tennis and then I'd be doing gymnastics. And um, I was always very active, which I feel like has carried through to my adult life of mm. always being busy and doing stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I'm the only child as well. So I can totally relate totally yeah. relate um you know it's like when when I was younger it's like where's where's my brother sister where is who do I play with <laughs> <laughs> but you do feel like when you when you're the only child you get whatever you want right you, you're like spoiled um but also very independent because yeah. you're not you don't have that backing of a sibling Mm. also but there's a there's a con con side to it as well where you know you you do feel a bit lonely you feel a bit you know you feel like oh everybody's got as experience of having a sibling and I don't have that what does what does having a brother sister love feels like what does yeah. it feel like yeah no that's so true I, I still think that now sometimes like with some of my friends and you know I've not got any children or anything but some of my friends who are in a similar situation to me they don't have children either but maybe their brother does so they get that sort of experience from them so yeah it's like you say it's got its advantages and disadvantages like everything else um mm. so, did yeah. you ever feel did you ever feel a bit lonely um I don't remember feeling it as a child but I I'm, I'm not sure I remember playing in my room on my own but I don't remember sort of actively feeling lonely but I do remember worrying as a child you know what will I do when I don't have my parents? Like, I was quite aware that they were all I had, if that makes sense. And it's strange, because if I am in a bit of a sort of a bad space mentally, even now, that is still a worry that, that carries through a little bit. So mm -hmm. I don't know if, and, and even now, like, obviously I live on my own. So there are times where I, I probably think, oh, it would be nice to live with someone. But I've always made sure, and this is probably a subconscious thing from being an only child, but I've always made sure that I've got loads of friends. Um, everywhere I go, I'm making new friends all the time, meeting new people. I'm always out and about. And I don't know if that's almost like a protection to make sure that I've always got people that I can, that, that are around me, you know, if, mm. if I ever find myself on my own at some point in life. I don't know. It's funny, yeah. the subconscious mind, you can't ever properly crack it and work it out, but you can notice little characteristics and traits in yourself and you're like, ah, right, okay, maybe that's why I do that or maybe that's why, you know. Mm, I mean, up until now, because I, you know, I found like my tribe, my family kind of, you know, in, in our spiritual community, there's yeah. so many people I call my brothers and sisters, yeah. but sometimes it doesn't have to be blood, right? You can, yeah. you, you can yeah. just click with anybody um and you're doing the right thing it's not protection it's, it's more of a we're social creatures mm -hmm. by nature we are social creatures you know we we need to be around people so yeah yeah, yeah I, I don't think it's a protection protection <laughs> at all <laughs> um so let's talk about your school life we briefly mm -hmm. touched upon your challenges while you yeah. were in school so let's yeah. talk about that yeah when I was it was mainly high school primary school I remember being fine quite happy um but then yeah I got into high school and I don't know if it was maybe because I went to a Catholic primary school so it was a slightly different experience my dad's Irish so he comes from like a big Catholic family and um so I was brought up Catholic which was absolutely fine it was just what I knew I used to go to church every Sunday so I went to a Catholic primary school and I don't know if that was maybe a bit more sheltered than some of the other primary schools in my in my local area so yeah I went to high school and I did experience I, I'd say it was quite bad bullying really actually in the first couple of years um I was just a bit weird and looking back now I don't know how you feel about this but I feel like being weird I I love that about myself I still think I'm a little bit weird like I have my little quirks and I'm not you know I'm not quite like what you would say normal or whatever but um I think that is so special now and if I ever had a child 
uh, or like came across a, a child of that age that was struggling and that people were calling them weird I'd really try and encourage that and be like that's great though that means you're unique that means you've got your quirks you're not trying to fit in the same box as everyone else but back then it wasn't okay to be weird um but the main thing was actually not even to do with my personality and the way I, I was a bit quirky but it was it was my skin I always had quite bad acne so yeah it was um they'd like call me spotty and stuff like that and it was written on the back of the toilet doors once which I remember really clearly and it was funny actually because I remember um I'd, I'd made like some new friends and they were really nice people they were really nice to me and I remember when I saw that on the back I've literally just remembered this now I remember when I saw that on the back of the toilet door my first thought instead of thinking like instead of feeling like upset or angry my first thought was I hope my new friends don't see that and realize that other people don't like me so that they don't want to be friends with me mm. and I remember that being my first thought and like that's just so me <laughs> like don't just have the normal approach to something like go one step further and just go, del delve in a bit deeper <laughs> yeah. but yeah yeah. It yeah I mean like it's, it's interesting because I got bullied in school as well like when I was in year seven throughout year seven I was bullied and it, it it it's quite um at that point you're you're kind of just learning how to integrate into the world and at the same time everybody all the other kids are projecting their stuff mm -hmm. onto you yeah but as an adult you can realize it it was like yeah you're projecting your trauma yeah. onto me you're doing this you're doing you know but as a child it really impacts you and then you grow up and it impacts because some of the times when I'm going into my healing session, so, I, you know, internal family system, like, you know, I, I work with it and it sometimes the memory comes back of the time I was bullied in school, you know, yeah. and while I go in schools now, deliver workshops, at first I, it was a right struggle and I didn't understand why I was feeling so anxious around kids. Yeah. Why is it? Why am I feeling so anxious? And then when we dug dug in a bit deeper, the memories were popping up of all the, the girls. Right. And I, I didn't feel my nervous system, my part, when feeling safe around kids because of that experience. Right. So you hold on to it. Yeah. You know, sometimes it plays out in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that makes sense. It really does. Yeah. It's so interesting, isn't it? When you, like, I remember I did this week long, um, I might have mentioned this to you when we spoke, when we've spoken before, but I did this week long don't want to call it a course but it was like they say it was like seven years of therapy in one week it's called the Hoffman process so it's nothing to do with Wim Hof but it's like um you go away for a whole week you're not really supposed to say too much about the experience because the element of surprise is what makes it so like work so well for people but part of that I'm, a massive part of that is looking back at your childhood and digging deep into things and for me the bullying at high school came up quite a lot and there was a lot of focus on like you've just said understanding the reasons why people were the way they were and the com and then bringing compassion in for those people and you know you can always there's always a reason why someone's acting the way they are always and the main girl there was quite a few because I was in an all girls school so it was same. Know, yeah yeah <laughs> same. so it, it, that that's not always helpful either you know with hormones and stuff but the main girl that was driving the bullying who used to kind of be more physical with me and get me up against the lockers and stuff like that she was from a really difficult background like her mum was um in prison for attempted murder in and out of prison she was going from like foster home to foster home and you know looking back she 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 had very a lot of reason for acting the way she acted and and I can see that now and I just wish her like I don't know where she is or what she's doing but I obviously just sent her like love and healing but as a child you just don't you don't think about that you just feel like confused and targeted like what's wrong with me why am I being treated like this you can't like process it all at that point can you so like you say when you get older it is important to take the time to process and try and heal from what's happened when you were younger I think I think you you know you've healed when you send them love. There's no oh, yeah. uh, resent, resent resentfulness or hatred yeah. towards them. So you know yeah. you're not you're not holding on to the anger or poison. Yeah. Um, and that's the work, I guess. <laughs> it goes back yeah. to everywhere. You know, it goes back to your childhood, your parents. That is the work. Yeah. So let's get into mindfulness. 
you're a mindfulness teacher, right? Yeah. So what is it that you do? So my actual, that's one of my, that's a qualification that I got outside of work. So my actual day job, as well as all the music, the Wim Hof, the mindfulness, I've, I've, I've got a day job that I've had for 10 years and it's a wellbeing manager. Um, I work from home now, which is great. That was from COVID, um, after COVID, through COVID. And I work with graduates who are doing their placement year at university. And I'm there, I'm a senior wellbeing manager now. So I'm their point of contact during that year. And I look after them from like a wellbeing point of view. I make sure that, you know, the role's not too stressful or too overwhelming and the objectives that they're being set aren't too difficult and stuff like that. So that's kind of always been the role. But over the last few years, I've kind of turned it into like more of a, it used to be called a service manager. And I just, outside of work, I trained to become a mindfulness teacher. I did ask at work if they'd fund it, the training, but unfortunately they couldn't. So I was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. So I did it myself. And then I started bringing that into the role, doing meditation sessions, mindfulness sessions, wellness workshops with little um, tips and, and things that I was just learning as well from like reading books, like so many, and my psychology degree that I did years and years before, like bringing it all together. Um, so yeah, the, I use my mindfulness a lot within my day job. Um, outside of work, um, I do do mindfulness sessions and self-empowerment workshops and things, but at the moment it's mainly the Wim Hof stuff that seems mm -hmm. to be in such high demand. The breath work, the ice, especially the ice. People are really starting to love cold water now and really understand the benefits. I think there's so much research and science now, finally, that's proving that what Wim has been saying for years is in fact true. And um, so, yeah, the mindfulness comes into those sessions whenever I do my breath work and my eyes, I bring it in. Um, but I definitely feel like Wim Hof is more fashionable at the moment, more so than mindfulness. There's more of a demand. I'm finding there's more of a demand for the Wim Hof side. Do you feel that since COVID, there's been quite a lot of mental health issues in society? Yeah. While well, yeah. you've been working with people, have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Especially with the younger generation, I found that. Have you found that as well with people that you? Yeah, with? yeah. I've I've gone on quite a few who've um quite like suicidal attempts, and you know, yeah. there's been quite it's been quite heavy. Because yeah. the thing is, with our with the younger generation, um, we've not seen anything like this, right? Mm -hmm. We've yeah. our parents, grandparents have seen wars. Yeah, in on a, in a global scale. Yeah. Whereas we haven't, we've not seen anything on a global where we we've, we've had to be tucked in, right? And that yeah. is a that is a big, it's a safety. It's your root chakra. It's your safety, yeah. safety. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's been taken. It's been um taken away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's affected a lot of people, and we probably don't really even know yet how it's affected the really young uh, kids that were going through that at, at the time. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I feel for the, cause that's who I work with day in, day out, the university age group, you know, the, 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 the people that were going through university at the time of COVID, they had that whole experience taken away from them. Like I remember when I was at uni and it was, it was 2009 to 2012, I was a very different person to who I am now. I used to love drinking. I used to love going out all the time. You know, I was probably known as like the. The, the party animal that used to just love staying out but that was before I'd healed that was before I'd done the work and looked back at my childhood and worked through all of the things that had been stored up so I guess that was my release at that point was just to drink and block it out and to go and have fun I didn't even know at that point that there was anything to block out but they were although that's not healthy. They were some of the best years of my life. And I needed that. I needed to go through that to then become the person I am now and to get to this point. And I just feel so much for those people that didn't get that university experience. And they were literally just sat in their parents' house, um, just working, doing their degree from home. And, 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 you know, and that was, that was kind of a bit for them. So, yeah. Yeah, I found that in schools as well. So we can, part of the work that I do, we go into schools and we um, interview refugee kids. And oh. so there's been different kids in the background. So somebody has Tourette's, somebody is like, you know, had extreme um, 
uh, violence uh, in in another country yeah. and most of them during said during pandemic was the hardest because they 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 were starting school year 7 and they would they didn't come into school they were at yeah. home and they didn't make any friends so they oh. feel like they feel like they've fallen behind mm-hmm. in terms of socializing so mm-hmm. yeah it's 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 interesting how it mm-hmm. but i guess like people like you will like you know your mindfulness and the breath work it's 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 why you do what you do it's why mm-hmm. you had that kind of i would say awakening from yeah, the person yeah. who you were to doing mm-hmm. the work to where you are now yeah right definitely yeah right so let's talk about Wim Hof breathing yeah. right so you said there's lots of benefits oh, to yeah. it right what are the benefits and what is it for our listeners who don't know okay I've never heard of it yeah so Wim Hof is a an amazing guy who unfortunately lost his wife to suicide um years ago and he was left with all of the children and he way before that ever since being a young boy he felt drawn to the cold just going in the cold water and he didn't know why there was no scientific evidence at this point he just knew that every time he went in the cold he felt better and it was only when he lost his wife that he really decided to actually look I guess you have to find something to throw yourself into don't you at a time like that so he started to really throw himself into it. He was going, feeling more and more drawn to the cold and he was finding that before he was going in, again, he didn't know why, but he was doing like a very specific type of breathing that was making him feel primed and prepared to go into the cold. So through a lot of scientific research and being hooked up to machines after years and years and years of just being a bit of a performing monkey and people putting him in big ice things outside of venues to get the crowd excited and he was just a bit of a medical marvel or a clown or whatever after after a lot of that he eventually was like actually studied by Radband University and they have worked really closely with WIM for quite a few years and done loads of studies since but the first few studies they did showed that actually he was really right with the breath work um it's it's quite amazing so there's there's three pillars to the Wim Hof method there's the breath work the breathing method the cold exposure and then mindset And the reason mindset is its own pillar is because it really takes a lot of mental strength and willpower to be able to actually to to convince yourself to get in a bath of ice. It's it's not easy. It's, you know, it takes a lot of strength, but that's why one of the reasons why it's so rewarding afterwards. So um, the first study that they did, and I won't go through them all, but this is just an amazing one. They injected Wim with some dead bacteria, which is supposed to make you really, really poorly supposed to make you be sick and he was convinced that this breathing method that he was doing was accessing the immune response and strengthening the immune system there was no research he just felt like he'd never never got a cold he was never ill since doing this method so they injected him with this uh, dead bacteria and he just sat for a couple of hours just doing the breathing exercises which is I, I, I probably won't demonstrate it now, but it's where you breathe, breathe deeply into the stomach and then into the chest and then you release and you do quite a few rounds of that. And then you go into some uh, breath holds and then uh, deeper inhalations. There are free videos on YouTube that, that Wim has done himself. Um, but yeah, he, he did the breathing method for about two hours and he wasn't sick, didn't get a headache. He felt he had no high temperature, none of the effects that, that usually you would get so all of the scientists and the doctors thought wow this guy's like again you know a medical marvel so Wim said let me train 30 men in the sit in the Wim Hof method and let's if they volunteer and they're up for it and see if they can pass this same test that I've just passed so to cut a long story short uh, the results showed that the Wim Hof method was able to strengthen the immune system and people didn't get the same uh, effects that you would get if you didn't do the breathing method they weren't getting headaches they weren't being sick and um, so that was the start of it that was the beginning of and that was 2011 and that was the start of people thinking oh like there's something in this and since then it's just built and built and built and built and built i think there was already research probably being done on the cold um but there was a, there's been a lot more um so yeah there's just been so much research now that shows not just the real detail like that of, of the things that are going on within our body but 
even just more basic things like we feel good after we've done the breath work and the cold because we release 250 percent dopamine in the brain which is the um the happy hormone and whenever we feel a little bit sad we might have a bit of chocolate or a bit of coffee or listen to a, a, a you know a song that makes us feel good and that'll release a bit of dopamine but 250 percent mm-hmm from an ice bath that is just incredible you know so that's just one example but there's so many benefits to this method physical and mental and I think that's why people are really sort of getting interested because they're trying it and then thinking oh actually I feel really good like I want to do that again (laughs) yeah yeah I experienced it um with uh Josh Connolly he's uh he's also another ambassador for Tales of Spire so we worked we work with him and yeah. um he's uh, he came to manchester and uh, my friend chris is like do you want to go it's like i've never experienced it but let's go and it was just incredible but i found that i just another method you can release a lot of trauma <laughs> a lot of emotions lot. because you yeah. don't know what's stored in the body and yeah i was just off just crying and all yeah. sorts of my body was tingling and everything was happening and then at, at the same time feeling dizzy and yeah. and then and then it was just like so zen still yeah 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 it's right amazing, it? the power of the breath and that's just from our breath it's free it's like mm. literally free for us to access you know we can just I'm not discrediting any medication out there there's there's definitely a place for it but we spend a lot of money and time looking at externally for answers and turn into medication when actually we should always first try what we've got within us to 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 heal ourselves and the breath is the most powerful tool the way we can use it to access all these different parts it's incredible yeah it's yeah especially with trauma I think if you can get your trauma out <laughs> just like that yeah like like you don't even need to go years of therapy you can just do it yourself yeah. if you want I know it's, it's crazy it's crazy um I actually do you think like have you seen the um the series on BBC when he um with all the celebrities yeah. Yeah. right yeah yeah I actually met Gabby Logan at a podcasting event like a couple of months ago went yeah. up to her fist bumper <laughs> bumped her and then I was like oh oh so this series this series like she was in a rush I was like this series like oh so that you had the most change in like all the because her trauma came up quite a lot yeah right that's yeah. Gabby Logan who's very professional mm. very um like steel like energy yes and right? she really it, it just, cracked yeah cracked uh, open there. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah she was she was nodding to it but at the same time she's like I gotta go I gotta go it's like oh my god oh my god I gotta ask you this <laughs> yeah. yeah no it's amazing it's yeah amazing. so have you have you noticed that in your clients as well while working um and also how do you hold space when the trauma is quite a lot like yeah how do you hold space it, it can be that that part of it can be difficult especially if like you say you're not expecting it so I think it's really important before every session to firstly explain to people you might feel tingling and that's tetany and explain what that means and what's going on in the body you might experience a little bit of a need to cry or even laugh or and just try not to be distracted by the person next to you and what their experience is that you know because it will be different every time as well when you go deep so yeah I think that's really important and there's definitely um, different experiences for different people but I find that no matter whether someone you know you I find this all the time you know you'll see somebody who's really crying and you think oh my god they're having a horrible time they're not going to come back to one of my sessions they're going to leave here and think why did I come and at the end they are the person that's the most grateful they're like I needed that I've been I've not cried all year and I needed to release that and I feel so much lighter and it's usually the people that you're looking at they're like oh I really hope they're okay and you just keep doing it and you you know it's usually they are the people that come back the most and they are the most grateful but yeah it's, it's amazing and even for me because I'm a singer I've noticed that well so one of the recent findings of studies is that the breath work the Wim Hof method increases lung capacity Mm. and that's been shown lung capacity is actually the closest link to lifespan so obviously diet's super important exercise all of those things but you would think that diet 
or exercise or sleep or something else would be the closest link to a long life. But actually lung capacity has been shown to be the thing that, that mean if you've got a bigger lung capacity, you've got more of a chance of, of living a longer life. So that is now been proven to be increased by the Wim Hof method. And as a singer, I can really feel that since doing the breath work, I've just got more space in my lungs. I can I can really like belt more when I'm singing. I can I can hold the note longer. So it's really impacting me in that way as well. Is this in NHS? Because I think obviously COVID affected your lungs, right? Yeah. It would be perfect uh, for I know. it. Well, there's there's only at the moment there's only two Wim Hof instructors in Manchester. There's myself and a lady called Jane, and it's really nice actually because we work pretty closely together we were running an event together this morning and she has a group called long covid which is where people who are still struggling with the effects and symptoms from covid go to her sessions and practice this breath work now obviously obviously she tailors the sessions a little bit differently for this group of people she wouldn't hold the breath as long with them but it's really helping them so mm. i don't think it's um on the nhs yet but you know, like I say, hopefully the more that time goes on, it will be. Mm, I feel like I need to come to your breathwork sessions. Yeah. I've had COVID about probably four times now. And oh. I think my lungs have just caved in. <laughs> so, oh. Oh my God. Oh. And I had them in the space of seven months. It's like, oh my God, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. Um, But yeah, no, I do find, I do find that like after COVID, it does change. I know a lot of people say that it's a, it's no big deal, but honestly it does like it. It does yeah. impact you. I couldn't for four months. I had a lot of be- uh, back and chest pain, um, and it was I just couldn't breathe. Probably even when I go on hike, I I go out of breath really quickly now. Right. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, so long COVID effects. <laughs> yeah, so I need to come to your breath work and just yeah. help with that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you want to say something? No, no. I'm yeah. just gonna say. I think it, I think it would really help. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fab. Okay. So let's talk about um. So BBC Radio, you're yeah. you're regularly on there. Um yeah. so what what is Monday motivation? How did that come about? Yeah, it's really interesting how um it came about with BBC at Radio. So when I released my first single, which was February 2020, it got to number two in the iTunes UK charts. And at the time I still lived in Sandbach, I hadn't moved to Manchester yet. So I was emailing the local radio stations, one of which was BBC Radio Stoke. And I asked them if they'd like to interview me about my song getting to number two, and they did. And during the interview, I just mentioned my my job, which was a wellbeing manager and said that I worked with graduates and I um, support them with their wellbeing. So the presenter got back in touch with me after the show and said, this is like a really difficult time, like, it was, ju- I say just after COVID, but it hadn't pro- properly gone at that point. It was still kind of around and a lot of people were still w- working from home and stuff. So he said, would you like to um, join the, you, like join us once a week and just do some well-being tips for the listeners? Because I'd said that I'd just finished qualifying as a mindfulness teacher as well at that point and all this stuff that I was doing. So I said, yes. So that's how it started I literally just um went on for a couple of weeks and then as it grew they were like right we're going to call it a name like what do you think it should be called I was like okay I think it should be called Monday Motivation because that's what I want to do I want to give short snappy quick tips on a Monday morning that set people up for the week so yeah and it was like I still join them now but I'm, I'm quite a lot busier than I used to be so it's not every Monday anymore but I'll always go on for any like important events like world mental health day or if they ever ask me to for something in particular but for two years it was every single monday monday motivation with lisa t at half seven and it was amazing it was so good um for for me because i was having to constantly keep like learning and researching and growing myself to to find ways that i could help others and that was then helping me and it was good for them because obviously i was volunteer i was doing this voluntarily but then also whenever I'd release new music, they'd play it and on the show and like really support me with my music because they were so grateful that I was doing this for them for free. So it really helped me to establish great relationships with them. And what was so nice is that quite often I'd get listeners writing in, like texting in, saying like how much the tips had like 
benefited them and helped them because I'd always make sure that they were really like accessible like not too I'm quite a spiritual person but I'd make sure that they weren't like too like wacky or spiritual the ideas I was giving they were very like things that could be understood by anybody not just if you were mindful or Wim Hof or spiritual anybody could access them so a lot of people would text in and say like thank you and that they were really grateful so that was just made it all worthwhile it was really good I think that's just really beautiful because what I normally say is that you are on universe's payroll so when you are in an act of service or helping others then universe will always bring you the good whether it's money or whether it's opportunities right Mm -hmm. and so you going on giving motivation to people those who need it at that at that time universe is like okay well I'm gonna ping it around and I'm gonna get they're gonna play your songs that you're gonna have a recognition so it's it works it works perfectly it really does because I feel like that's where everything started to kind of spiral for me because obviously to have that BBC radio um two years with BBC radio like not on my CV but you know on my portfolio Mm -hmm. that's kind of then made like I don't know if you know Fern McCann she's just um brought out a well-being app called Shira and I'm one of the mental health experts on the app and I think part of the reason she was interested in me is because I'd worked with BBC for two years and you know BBC were interested in me because of the psychology degree that I'd done and the mindfulness teacher so it all just kind of snowballs from one thing Mm. to the next and you've just got to trust the process and just you know like you say do your bit do good things keep working hard and then I believe that it will all work out yeah the internal work is the most um like I get like, like I talk about my stories everywhere so it's like I got there doing the internal work and trusting that that everything I'm doing now it's 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 put it it's like a puzzle a bigger bigger picture it's like a piece in a bigger picture puzzle <laughs> right yeah. so you just gotta trust and sometimes it's really hard to trust it really yeah. is you know I get that for some people it's like they they it's like you got to control and our society is like go 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 do 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 uh force this force that force this Mm -hmm. and it's like when you actually sit back less is more yeah it's it's interesting how it works because so many people come up to me there's there was one person who came up to me and said like how are you winning these awards how are you doing all of this I'm working my ass off doing the same thing you're doing and I said well you don't sit back enough (laughs) that's my secret yeah you know sit back and trust because it will come in a right perfect moment but because you're so forcefully hanging on to it it will keep running away from you 100 percent. I think I we spoke about this before I love manifestation and it it, it works there's there's just no doubt about it it's it's so powerful and I think there's definitely a place for it and I'll always lean on manifestation and visualization when I feel that it's for the good of not just me, but the universe. And when I'm a hundred percent sure that that is my path. But I also truly believe that if you are manifesting and focusing so much on achieving this one thing, you don't know what else you're missing out on. And if you sit back and, and, and just be on the good frequency, do your bit, do good, work hard, but let go and be open to anything. You, you never know what might come in. You don't want to be too focused Rigid. on one yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's that desperation holding on to it. It, no, it doesn't come into vision when it's desperation. Yeah, because right? all you're on is a frequency of desperation, which is then going to attract more desperate like, things to feel yeah. desperate about. So yeah, it, sound, it sounds so easy, you know, but <laughs> it's, it, some days some days it's I get that it's not. Yeah, I, th- I think the, it's just constant. Everything's constant and yeah. you're not a perfect being you know you will have I I even go through I teach about this I talk about this I do this but even I am like sometimes you know I'm getting impatient here now <laughs> you know but you just you just gotta you just gotta keep keep at it I think the most important work is the internal work yeah. I mean I can't stress that enough into yeah. you do the internal work everything on the outside will just come into fruition mm-hmm. and you let go of the external yeah um I would, my, well, my next question was about the the uh, Fern McCann's. <laughs> so how the, are you still working with her and what sort of things do you do? Yeah, so um, 
it's it's an interesting again again how it happened with Fern. It wasn't just the Shira app. I was working with her for a couple of years before. Um, again voluntarily, she's got a community, um, a nutrition business alongside all of the other stuff that she does, and it's all about fitness and looking after yourself. And as part of that, she likes to have people like yoga instructors and people like that doing um, things from more of a mental health side of things. So one of my friends was within the, the team and knew about the nutrition business and told me to reach out to see if she'd be interested in me doing some mindfulness and stuff. So I did that. And that's how I became got in contact with her and um, sort of started a working relationship. I was doing like Facebook lives for her community, just free mindfulness sessions. We went live on Facebook a couple of times and did some meditation together. So when when I saw that she was launching the Shura app, it wasn't like going in cold. Um, I already had that relationship established. So it was quite natural for that to happen. And it wasn't ever a long agreement. It was like, right, you will record 20 scripts and then we will pay you for those 20 scripts. They will be uploaded to the app and they will be used. So um, I planned the scripts, um, then I went to her house and recorded them and now they're on the app. So yeah, if she ever needs any more, um, they're called scripts or mini pods, pods, like instead of podcasts, it's like them, they're short, they're like four or five minutes. So she calls them pods. If she ever needs any more doing, I'd always be happy to, to do them. But um, it was just like a, like a contracted 20 scripts that's what was agreed if that makes sense so I think it's great because it's the especially celebrities um bringing this forward because that's what we need we need this in mainstream definitely yeah she's such a good advocate and again I, I mean pe people will have mixed opinions she's she's definitely had her, her own journey um but you know she is definitely driving the well-being world forward as best as she can in spite of whatever else has gone on for her in the past mm. so I respect mm. that okay so let's talk about your music right Yay. yeah <laughs> so you've had uh two number one singles and you yes, performed absolutely. at Glastonbury festival yeah oh how was that experience oh it was amazing again at the universe so I met my guitarist Luke um nearly two years ago now, just after I'd moved to Manchester, just after I'd made the decision to throw myself into this music world. And I was like, Manchester is the place that I want to be to do this. And I was like, I just need a guitarist. Like I can play guitar, but I'm not great. So I was going around loads of open mics, which is where you don't get paid. You just stand up on stage and you sing a few songs and you, you meet other musicians who are also doing the same thing. And I was at an open mic in Charlton and he was there with his brothers. They'd just been to watch a United match. And he said he never goes in that in that bar, but he just happened to be there. And he is an amazing guitarist, but he was kind of looking for a singer, a female singer to team up with mm. and start earning money, you know? And I was looking for a guitarist. So <laughs> it was like the universe just put us at the, at the right place at the right time. So he was chatting to me and he was like, oh, by the way, I'm also like part of this thing called the Magic Teapot, which is where we go around all these different festivals and play music if you want to join. I was like, yeah, that sounds great. And then one of the festivals was Glastonbury. So that's how I got into the festival through this thing called the Magic Teapot, which is so cool. Um, but when we got there, I was like, right, Luke, we are going around every stage and we are not stopping until we get a slot on one of these stages. I don't care if it's the smallest stage in the festival, we are finding a stage at Glastonbury and we are performing on that stage. So we went around every single day and I made him carry his guitar just so that they knew that we were the real deal, you know? <laughs> you know I was like asking all the stage managers, have you got any slots? Is anyone dropped out today? And then on the last day, I was we were just going around and I got to like the last stage in our area. And the guy was called Steve. And I was like, Steve, has anyone dropped out today? Can you fit us in anywhere? And he was, I think he just felt sorry for me or he was getting sick of me. And he was like, fine, you can come on at four o'clock for half an hour. I was like, yes. So that was it. We we went, we got ready and we went and we played on the stage and it was just amazing. Like 
the crowd obviously is just absolutely insane because everyone's just so happy and on such a good vibe so yeah, yeah it's brilliant oh that's amazing I've actually listened to a couple of you I was like stalking you on on uh, Spotify this week <laughs> preparing for this interview you oh. you have an amazing amazing voice thank amazing you. incredible gave me goosebumps so oh, um you. yeah yeah I think you're gonna do really well I, oh. I think you're gonna do really well um you're trying to bring the music into wellness yeah. right now. So yeah. that's quite unique. I don't see many artists doing this no. and it is a little bit risky. Yeah, right? it, is. it is. But Tony Robbins, as you know, makes you believe that anything is possible if you believe in it enough. So yeah, it was after our UPW event in July where Tony Robbins was in Birmingham and we spent that amazing four days, not knowing that we were both in the same room, but we were. <laughs> yeah. yeah, It was after that event that I just left and I thought, I do, I've got such a passion for music. I've got such a passion for wellness. I'm doing all this separate stuff. It just makes sense for me to bring it together and actually when I was telling you the the story about the BBC the very first big thing that happened to me that was a wellness opportunity that came to me because of my single my music single releasing um, getting to number two so it was always meant to be the universe was showing me signs from the start it was always meant to be together it just takes a while to to feel it and come into it yourself so I know it's not really being done I know it's risky but it just feels like the right move for me. And I think as long as you're doing something that makes you feel good and you can shine that through for others and that's then making them feel good, it doesn't matter whether it takes off and it becomes massive or not because you're already being, you're already successful. You know, success isn't defined by how much money you make for me. Um, it isn't defined by how much money I make or being on the biggest stage. I'd love, I'd love those things. Don't get me wrong, but success for me is how I feel when I'm doing my job. And for me now that I've brought them together, I feel like I've found my thing. I feel like I've found what I am here in this world to do, and that is to heal people, not just through the breath and through mindfulness and the skills that I've learned, but through the gift that I've been blessed with of my voice. And it's all just one big thing. So. We will see what the universe has in, in store, but I, I am feeling very grateful that I've come to that realization. Yeah, and then universe has showed you, like from the beginning, get go, you're going to be combining this together because uh, in 10 years time, I, w- I would think that the conscious musical will arise and you're yeah. you're probably leading on that right now. Yeah. Um, what do you feel about frequencies? Because we know um, we talk about the music frequency that you use in mainstream yeah and our subconscious mind yeah does it play a role in a manifestation like music and yeah definitely because music when used when used right as you as you know it can be so healing like the frequency of music like you will have heard of like binaural beats and Mm -hmm. there's different frequencies you can use that are healing um, like the hertz like 582 hertz and things like that so that's another reason it's not just that I love singing and I want to do it for me it's that I truly believe that when people are in that beautiful space where they've just done breath work and mindfulness and the subconscious mind is so open to positive change that to actually hear live music playing in such a raw form from an acoustic guitar and the vocals being sang live right next to you with positive affirmations coming out, I think that's so powerful and so healing. So yeah, I think the frequency of music is is really important and really powerful, yeah. Mm, so that's where you're aiming towards as well. You Are you working with frequencies as well? And I'm not working with them actively at the moment, but that could be something that somebody else has mentioned that to me actually. So that could be a Probably sign. Probably universe, well. yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like you've put that nugget in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really could. But one thing I am wanting to do is because this, what the the conversation that I've just been sort of focusing on there is is talking about bringing the music into the wellness world, which is definitely feels like that area is taking off quite a lot. The other side of this is bringing the wellness into the music world. So a big part of my life is doing gigs. So these are people that are buying tickets to come and see Lisa T, the singer, perform. They're not interested in sitting and meditating or doing breath work. They are wanting to see a show. 
they've seen me perform before and they're buying a ticket because they want to see me sing. So this was the most risky thing I did. I had a sold out show in London about two or three weeks ago. And I had a couple of people from Warner Music that came to watch the show who had wow. with. And I decided that I was going to bring in some meditation into the event. And I actually had a guy from t- the Tony Robbins event. I don't know if you know, Alan Khaleesi, I think his name is. He, you might know him if you... Ring a bell. Yeah, he's... I, I, he's a keynote speaker at some of Tony's events, but I don't know how close he is to Tony. But anyway, we'll we'll talk yeah. offline. You, yeah. you might recognize him. <laughs> yeah. But um, he, I, I managed to get chatting to him at UPW and I invited him to the event as well. So I knew there was going to be at least one person in the room that was going to appreciate this meditation experience because it's very similar to some of the stuff that Tony does, you know, where you put your hand on your heart and you think of some of the things you're grateful for. And to me, that's so normal. It's so natural. I do that every day, you know. But to people that are, I mean, I started out in the country, the UK country scene a couple of years ago. I'm going a bit more poppy now. But to people that are literally UK country music fans, sort of, um, you know, 50-year-old men who love country music, they like drinking beer, you know, not being stereotypical, but usually those the men that I know that come to the gigs, they're not really going to be interested in meditation. Um, Mm. So it was really risky, but honestly, it was so well received to the point where some of these men that I would never have thought would have been interested in that were writing reviews about the show saying how special it was, that that the words that were used were, Lisa treated us to a wellness wellness session midway through the gig. She stopped the gig and she treated us to a wellness session. And that wording felt so special. And I thought, I'll never make that mistake again to assume that people won't be interested in meditation because no matter who you are and what you love and and what you don't love, everybody needs to feel good. And that for me was the biggest, most rewarding thing that I've done this summer Mm -hmm. because it was such a risk. And although that side of it, I've not had as much opportunity to crack that yet because um, basically in the music world if you want to put your own show on it costs quite a lot of money you have to hire a venue then you have to sell tickets and you know it takes quite a bit of time whereas with wellness events it's a little bit easier to it seems to be anyway people are buying tickets and they're wanting to come um music events you tend to just do like maybe one every few months so I have got another one coming up when I'm going to do the same thing but yeah that feels a bit like harder to bring the wellness into the music world but I'm so pleased that I've made a start and when I release my next song I've got two more songs that have already been done which are not um I guess self-empowerment songs they're pop like fun pop love love type songs which are also fun but I've decided that when I release and write my next songs they're going to be songs that I can use in my wellness sessions and they're going to be words that are empowering and uplifting, but with a, a kind of a poppy, dancey feel. So not like slow songs, but like mm. I want to I want to write songs that are like empowering, fun, like dancey, poppy, but with a positive message. You know, when you're singing yeah. along and it's like you don't even realize it because you're just singing along because you're enjoying the song, but you're actually saying affirmations to yourself. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm going for basically so that is your ultimate vision which was my next question what's next for you what is your ultimate yeah. vision that is that your ultimate vision I'd say, yeah as much as I feel so grateful in where I am right now and I do believe that you know you need to let go and just trust what the universe has in store if I if I had to visualize what I where I would like to go with this whole thing it would be to eventually be known as Lisa T like the girl that does both oh she's the girl that when she's doing a gig she brings like some breath work in and and, like she does meditation and stuff as well doesn't she oh I've been to one of her shows before and I'm I'm, you know maybe I'm at a Tony Robbins event or I'm on a big stage and I've got and I'm singing and I've got everyone standing with their hands on their heart listening to the words and then thinking of what they're grateful for and that that's my vision like Mm -hmm. That's what I'd love to happen. So we will see, universe, what you think of that. <laughs> I got I got goosebumps while you were saying that. That, that means that it's coming to fruition. It's, it's just a matter of, like, when. 
it, yeah. it's, it's going to come into fruition for you. I really do feel it. Um, I th- funnily, I've got a vision while you're talking about a vision where you're actually doing a cold bath therapies at the same time at the same venue as well. Like that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Did singing, wellness, breath work, everything combined That's- in a big oh, event. Oh, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Right. Um, I know we're short on time, but I actually do have rapid fire questions. Oh yes. I asked everybody. I, I grill everybody who comes on. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. What is your definition of universe God life? Quick answer. Do you want? You can quick... expand on it as much as I... you want. It's up the to first you. thing that came to me was the sun. Like just mm. a big image of the bright, beautiful sunshine, like universe, God, light, just sunshine. Oh my God. I actually explained that analogy kind of thing in, in an interview with Tim Mana the other day. So I was like, you think of yourself, think of the universe as a sun and you're the rays and you're going back to oneness. Yeah, I love that. Oh my God. Yes, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. What do you think happens when you die? I think it's just so weird because like I keep seeing the imagery before the answer comes to me. I think, um, I don't know if you know Ram Das. Yeah. Yeah, he says, because um, he has all the, well, he's not here anymore, but he had all these connections with the spiritual world. And it always sticks in my head when he said that it's death is like taking off a tight shoe. And I just love that. And I believe that we just, I can't explain it in words, but I can feel it. It's just like a, you know, like when you said you were doing the breath work Mm -hmm. and there was all these different things and then there was like sadness and isn't it? And then it was just Zen, just Mm -hmm. like when you like reach that level at certain points in your life of transcendence through meditation or breath work, and it's just absolute stillness where there's nothing else. That's what I imagine eternity and soul to be like just that feeling of like just it's not even bliss it's just nothing it's there just just, there it's nothing but it's everything yeah all at once like yeah there's no human word for it no there isn't (laughs) (laughs) I gotta tell you about my experience but that's all fair (laughs) um how do you define religion and spirituality um it's, that's a really tricky one for me because I was brought up, as I said, religious, Catholic, and a lot of my family are Catholic. And I, there's a lot, I, I love religion because I love the concept of getting up and going to church and like the community aspect of it. And I love the the belief that there's that there's more. The thing that doesn't sit right with me about religion is the sinning and the the punishment and the asking for forgiveness. But then on the other hand, you know, if you are doing if you're doing wrong, it's good to to ask for so I don't know. I'm 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 I am i am i would not ever I wouldn't call myself religious anymore. I would definitely if I had needed to identify myself, I would call myself spiritual. For me, again, the, the difference is that when I think about religion, I, I'm a very visual person. I, I I imagine a church and I imagine people walking in and, and seeking and hoping for for forgiveness and hoping for like something more to be good after life whereas for me spirituality again it's just that sunshine it's just mm. is good it, there's no ifs there's no hope there's no water it's just light like mm. that for me is the difference yeah I agree I agree mm. what's the lesson that took you the longest to learn oh god <laughs> that anger is not a sign of strength it's a sign of weakness yeah wow I think really I thought of that now but yeah I used wow. to have a lot of anger inside me when I was younger and mm. I used to think it made me like big to be like angry and speak up and say my piece and I'll speak my mind and yeah mm. I think it's not a sign of strength it's a sign of weakness that's what I wow think. <laughs> that, that's the first one we have amazing um do you believe that people with horrible beginnings end up creating the best futures yeah 
I think a lot of people that have struggled, whether it's with childhood or, you know, mentally or like with physical struggles, like not having money growing up or whatever it might be, know the relief and the value of feeling good and the gratitude that comes with that. So they want to make sure that they create whatever they can to help other people to feel good, whether that's in a whatever space that might be in. So yeah, I think there's a lot of examples of people that have been through hardships that have come on to create amazing things, aren't there? So Tony yeah. Robbins, one of them, Robin, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm fully in present moment when singing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you believe there is an end to healing? No. Unfortunately, <laughs> you gotta come back and do it all over again. <laughs> what are you talking about? There's another contract waiting. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I think as well, like it's like, oh no she's not we may as well forget about this time we'll add that to the next one <laughs> yeah she'll, she'll I, have to do that next time yeah yeah it's like oh you're finding it hard in a, a relationship in this life ah, scrap that you will you you're ready for your soulmate but you're coming back again yeah <laughs> so yeah, yeah oh my god i love it mm -hmm. um the world needs more of what compassion kindness kindness feels a bit generic but it's true you know we just need to be more compassionate more kind to each other yeah mm. that peace yeah yeah um what is that one message that you would like to give someone who is going through adversity adverse <laughs> adversity going through a dark night of soul and or spiritual awakening and can't see the light at the end of the tunnel what is that one message message that you'd like to give them yeah um I think there's probably two like <clears throat> the thing that I've realized when I struggle with um with things is that it really feels like it's gonna be forever it like it really it, like uh, when you're in it it feels like I can't imagine how I'm ever going to feel okay. But time, I believe, is the sometimes the only thing. I think it's so important to do other things like, you know, journaling, gratitude is so important, breath work, meditation, to get you through those dark days. You, you have to find any, there's always something to be grateful for, even if it's the smell of perfume like anything there's always something that you can pick out to be grateful for so it's really important to to do those things each day but just knowing that everything is temporary nothing's forever so that would be the first thing and then the other thing that I've actually got written on my little blackboard that I look at all the time every day and it makes me feel so good and it it could be taken either way but again it's Ramdas it's one of his quotes and it says we are all just walking each other home oh and that's beautiful I just love it because I think we get so caught up in what if I never meet my soulmate what if I don't have kids what if I do have kids and they don't like like what if this what if that you know what if I don't be so it's like we're all just walking each other home that's it that's all we are doing here let's not overcomplicate it and I mean I'm saying that like I live by that I try to live by that but I'm a, go get her I'm do 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 I'm this I'm that sometimes I have to step back and remind myself just don't stress Lisa mm. like it's really not that deep like we are just literally walking each other home just let yeah. go fine and that just makes me feel so peaceful because it makes me just feel like everything's okay like it's fine yeah and that's such a beautiful way to live actually it really is because yeah. we do live in a society where it's like you have to have this, you have to have that, you have to, no, you don't, you, you don't, your yeah. home, build that home within yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, How can people contact you? Yeah. So I've got two Instagrams because one is music and one is wellness. Um, My music one is Lisa T official. Um, 
well it's lisa t official 01 but you can it comes up with lisa t official my website is also lisa t official.com and there's a wellness page on that uh same on facebook i've got a page on there lisa t official so mainly it's lisa t official um and even if it's the wellness you can still access that from there but the wellness stuff is lisa t wellness so amazing thank amazing you. oh thank you lisa for coming on i mean uh, and sharing your wisdom knowledge and also the breath work i did i personally didn't know some of it myself and i'm sure it's going to help many of our listeners who don't know and yeah so thank you for sharing your wisdom really really appreciate it oh thank you so much for having me on it's been lovely i appreciate it thank you thank you thank you for listening to this episode i would absolutely love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been you can share your thoughts on my facebook or instagram madia sosen if you would like to listen to this episode I am on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many, many more. Just search Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends as that will help me out a lot. Thank you so much once again, and I will see you in the next episode.